Hello everyone, you are welcome to the First Love TV show. My name is Andrea and I'm here with Francisca. Hey guys. Ricarda. Hey everyone. And Marion. Hey y'all. I'm so excited for today's episode because we're gonna be talking about beauty. Wow. The Bible says in Proverbs 31 verse 30, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. This verse seems contradictory to our conception and understanding of beauty because we spend so much time on our nails, on our hair, yes. on our clothing. And so it begs the question or raises the question, why does the Bible say that beauty is vain? Does the Bible have a different idea or conception of what beauty is? And so that is what we're going to be talking about for this segment of the show. So guys, I want to know what is beauty? Well, like, when I think of beauty, the first thing that I keep in mind is that it can be both internal and external. Mm -hmm. But for, I feel like for most of us, the thing that we tend to focus on is the external part. Like, that's the first thing that draws you to a person. Like, when you see what they look like on the outside and that's attractive to you, that's, like, what makes you want to go up to them. And even in the Bible, in Samuel, when the prophet Samuel goes to anoint someone to be the king of Israel... Everyone thinks that he's going to choose Eliab because he's strong, he's tall, he's the oldest, he has a beard, he yeah, he's handsome. Like, <laughs> everyone's like, obviously you're going to pick him, but then he <laughs> picks David. And the Bible says in 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, that man looks on the outward, but God looks at the heart. So that just shows you, even from those times, like how much of a deal the outward appearance is in the eyes of humans. Yeah, yeah what you're saying is accurate actually because even if you take like for example we are talking about society nowadays mm -hmm. i feel like people tend to focus more on the outside appearance like when you look at people like celebrities yeah. like you see everyone just looks at them some of them are even famous because of their looks like mm -hmm. a lot of celebrities yeah, actually are famous because of how they look like and you can tell that that's what people tend to focus on or like even nowadays, you see that people even go get surgery, plastic surgery. There's something called body sculpting now that, like, if you don't Wait, want something. Sorry. What is body sculpting? sculpting? Yeah, body sculpting. Yeah, it's like, that. if you don't want something, like, let's just say you want a flat you stomach. redistribute fat. Yeah, so, like, they'll take another. it from there, and then they'll put it somewhere. Maybe I want a bigger butt or something else, and then they'll just move it there. So you can tell that. <laughs> no. Yeah, they do that. And then you can tell. You have to look this way you have to look like a kardashian you have to look like a beyonce, beyonce. you have to have hair this color you have to have eyes the yeah, same color yeah. and that doesn't necessarily mean beauty you know um beauty like what you were saying it's internal and external and a lot of times like we we live in we live in this world that tells us like okay you have to be blonde or you have to look this way to be beautiful and if you're not you're not beautiful you're ugly yeah. but you know that that's totally false and that's what a lot of us grow up believing that we're not beautiful because we don't look like what the magazines portray as yeah. beautiful and i think as francisco was saying earlier um she mentioned that everyone is beautiful and i think that it is important that you know that you are beautiful. The Bible says that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That yeah. means that you are a masterpiece. So sometimes we look at other people and we say that, oh, I wish I was this height. I wish I was, I had this hair. I wish yeah. that I had um, these eyes. And we try to at times compare ourselves to other people because we think that we need to fit in a mold or we need to right. fit in a box. But everyone is beautiful. Right. And I think that that is very important. Right. Yeah. And then, um, the story of Leah and um, Rachel. Um, the Bible talks about Leah and Rachel. They were sisters, and um, the Bible describes Rachel as being beautiful. But then yeah. her sister was not as beautiful, but the Bible also describes her as having tender eyes. Mm -hmm. So just because she wasn't, quote-unquote, beautiful, she still had characteristics of yeah. hers that was beautiful. She had tender mm -hmm. eyes. And maybe she was sweeter than Rachel. Maybe she yeah. was kinder than Rachel. Mm -hmm. She was more friendly. Who knows, you know, like... Perhaps, like, that was what made her eyes so tender, you know, as in comparison to yeah. her sister, Rachel. Yeah, and what you guys were talking about, I just mentioned, like, I remember growing up, you know, 
okay, since I'm from Africa or from the African descent, like growing up back at home, it was okay to see people my skin color. But then when I uh, like when I came here and after living here for a while, I realized that like back in school, people used to call me, oh, like the black girl, you're as dark as like you know they used to say. Yeah hurtful things like that mm -hmm. and so I ended up growing up thinking that okay my skin color is not so pretty like there are people with prettier skin color like and you know here in America honestly people hate to admit it but they t tend to like Look focus down. more on the lighter light people mm -hmm. or like brighter skin color that's what people find beautiful here so I remember I actually grew up grew I actually like I struggled with like believing in myself that I was beautiful yeah. like I was, I mean, I'm okay, like, you know, like, mm -hmm. how to say. So it's really, really important to find, like, your inner beauty, to realize that you're beautiful. You don't need, like, people telling you that you look pretty because yeah. I've realized that sometimes even now, like, when people tell you you're not beautiful, you tend to think, like, am I really that yeah. pretty? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. like, when you don't hear people, people tell you, yeah, like, yeah. oh, like, even today you wear a, a pretty outfit and no one complimented you. You're like, yeah. did they not see? <laughs> <laughs> I was wearing this dress so people would see, you know, small, yeah. small things like that. And I feel like sometimes we do look for beauty in the wrong yeah. things, but for sure. we're all beautiful. And Even absolutely. when you speak about, um, let's say, when you were younger and, like, people being teased and um, things, I remember that when I was younger, someone would always say, call me Mount Everest, and I was so sad. Why, though? <laughs> Wait, no, I mean, what did Mount what? Everest represent, though? <laughs> Um, Mount Everest, it represented, um, the person was saying that I had a big forehead, so oh. I was just so sad. I was oh. like, God, if only I could shave, like, my forehead oh. down, or if I had a different forehead, yeah. or maybe if my parents laid me flat on my forehead when I was young, <laughs> or something like that, then, yeah. you know, my forehead wouldn't be so big. But then, as I grew older, I had to be comfortable with who I am and see beauty in the lens of God, right. and yeah. finding yeah. my identity in Christ, and not in what other people will say right. concerning me. Right, yeah, for sure. That's true. And I like what Francisco was saying about how growing up in Africa, her dark skin, like no one would have thought anything of it. But when mm -hmm. you're in America, it's like, oh, you're dark. Yeah. You're as black as this, you're as black as this. <laughs> yeah. But that just like makes me think of the fact that beauty is so subjective and it's really just based on whoever's perceiving it. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, I remember Growing up, I grew up around a lot of white girls, and I had a different body type from them. So they would be like, "Oh, like why are your thighs so thick? <laughs> like, oh, why are you not so skinny like us? I don't even think it like that." But they'd yeah. be like, "Oh, like you you're thick. thick, yeah." yeah. And I always feel it's so out of place. Yeah. But then, like, depending on whoever you mingle with, like that's considered more attractive some right. places, and like other places, it's like, "Oh no, I prefer someone who's lean and skinny." Yeah. Right. So it just really depends on who's around you and that just shows how yeah yeah we all perceive beauty very yeah. differently like what you consider beautiful like physical beauty to one person may not be what someone else considers beautiful yeah. you know so um I also had those same challenges in high school you know as I was developing um some of my friends we're not so much developing, <laughs> you know, like sitting on, you know, sitting down and they would call me thunder thighs and oh. things like that was, yeah. it, was it was hurtful because it made me feel like, oh, I'm gaining weight, you know, mm. I need to lose weight. Yeah. But in actuality, there was nothing wrong with me. You know, I was, I was the proper body t um, size, but it, I felt as though like, oh my God, I need to lose weight. And I was probably like 15. And what do you know about losing weight at that age, <laughs> dieting yeah, exactly. at that age. And I believe that's why so much, there's so much like, you know, disorders, like eating disorders now because yeah. people have this sure. perception of like what they need to look like, you know, because that's what we're putting, that's what people put out there for a society, in society. Yeah, and I think as you were saying with the whole like eating disorders and even as we've been talking amongst ourselves, it's important that you are content with who you are because it can lead to um, depression, it can lead to, um, like jealousy. you mentioned, eating disorders, yeah. jealousy. Yeah. yeah, you know, you can, it can envious be of envious people. of other people and it can lead to other things that will cause you to even feel... Um, bad about yourself but it's important that you're content with who you are and you understand that everybody is created differently you know everybody has their own portion of beauty you may mm -hmm. not have everything yeah. but you have a portion that's been given to you right. and so you have to be content 
with that. And yeah. I think it's also important to note that it's not only a woman issue, like, oh, it's yeah, only it's women it's are yeah, beautiful, yeah. you know. And yeah. this also applies to guys. Guys also deal with their insecurities and their problems mm -hmm. of what beauty is. Right. That's true, because I remember we were talking earlier, and um, someone mentioned that, okay, this is not supposed to be funny, but, like, you know, short guys. Yeah. You know, nowadays, yeah. like, some guys are even insecure because they're short. Yeah. And then no girl wants to, like, even talk to them or marry them because they're, like, they yeah, yeah, that's what they think. Yeah, like, because I'm short, like, no one would want me or, like, yeah. you know, because some girls, they want someone that's taller than them. Mm -hmm. And then when the person is shorter than them, it's, like, a big issue. Or even guys that, I mean, they feel like they're too big, you know, or fat yeah. and things yeah. like that. So it's not only a girl thing that, yeah, yeah like, it's not only a girl thing. It's also guys that struggle with finding beauty or right. finding themselves, too, so. And even as mentioned, um, Marion, you mentioned earlier, um, being in the group with your friends, that beauty is in the eye of the behold, in mm -hmm. the eyes of the beholder. I think that's yeah. how the phrase goes, that to one person, you may not be beautiful, right. but mm -hmm. to another person, you're fabulous. Right. So in life, if you try to please everybody, in life, if you try to continuously meet people's standards, right. you'll always fall short because everybody will not think you're beautiful. Mm -hmm. So you have to be content and happy with who you are. Absolutely. Yeah. And for me, I think that really solidifies the fact that beauty is vain. I mean, it's not really something that you can define, and you're really just going to spend your life, if you're trying to focus on being beautiful, you'll never, you'll never be beautiful to everyone. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's just like a useless cause. Yeah. Right. If you just tuned into the First Love TV show, we've been talking about beauty. And we said that everybody is beautiful and that you must accept the fact that um, and be content with the fact that you are beautiful and that God has created you the way that you are. We also mentioned that beauty is vain and beauty can easily fleet away because beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Not everybody may like you, not everybody may think you're attractive, but the person that thinks you're beautiful is God because he created you himself. And we're gonna come back after taking a short break and continue this discussion on beauty and see what exactly is beauty and what the Bible tells us about beauty. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Hi guys, my name is Francisca and welcome back to the first level. What up y'all? Hey everybody, you're welcome to the First Love TV show. Before we went on break, we were talking about beauty. And we said that beauty is in the eye of the beholder and that everyone has a portion of beauty. And in this segment of the show, we're gonna be looking at other factors which contributes to someone's beauty. So guys, I wanna hear from you all. What other factors contributes to somebody's beauty? Um, I believe that being um, humble or having humility is a huge factor that contributes oh, sure. to someone's beauty. For example, if you, even in James, um, a verse in James uh, lets us know that for God resists the proud, but he gives more grace to someone that's humble. Mm -hmm. So that should let you know that there's a certain grace that comes upon your life when you're humble. And also, yeah. if you take someone in the Bible like Vashti and Esther, you can be just like we're talking about beautiful. Vashti was seen as someone that was yeah. very, very mm -hmm. beautiful. But the things that were inside of her was not. Like she was very, she wasn't humble or she wasn't seen as someone that was very very humble so it's important not to just be someone that's beautiful but your heart or whatever is inside of you is like bad or like it doesn't represent you in a good way you just raised a good point i didn't even think about that that yeah beauty can get you in the door so yeah. it can get yeah. you in the door sure. but when you look at vashti it got her in the door she was very beautiful mm -hmm. but the thing that is that will allow you to remain inside the house quote unquote is other qualities and yeah. so as she was in the house she harbored um pride in she her, showed her true self. yeah she showed her true self. <laughs> and so i think that is one thing that you know we get so um focused on okay my outward appearance mm -hmm. i have to look yeah. like this i have to look like that but we fail to realize that other things such as pride and arrogance and all these other things can cause your beauty to even vanish because yeah. i'd rather be with somebody who's humble than somebody who is proud and very attractive yeah. 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 which yeah. is the point yeah. absolutely and i like how you brought that comparison with Vashti because a lot of times you'll meet somebody who is beautiful, you know, outwardly, mm -hmm. but 
um, on their inside, they're, they're nasty. They're nasty to people. They, you know, they have no regard to others. They're selfish. They're yeah. conceited. Um, those are qualities that I find are not attractive. But what is attractive is someone who is giving, who is loving, who is selfless, you know, yeah. and, and not so, so consumed with themselves, you know, which we would see in someone who's, like, overly confident or conceited or proud. So, yeah. like, even in that, like, God sees our heart. And I love the scripture in First Samuel that says, um, you know, that, that man looks on the outward, but God, God sees the heart. He's the one that judges our heart. He sees the motives of our hearts. And so even in that, like, that, those are reasons why, like, our heart needs to, like, be pure, yeah. you know, yeah. because yeah. you can look beautiful on the outside, but if your heart isn't, a hu if you don't have a humble heart, if you don't have a loving heart, then you're, you know, sad to say ugly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. beautiful. It's true, though. Yeah, and I think so. that's why that scripture comes to life, that beauty is vain, but mm -hmm. the person that fears the Lord um, should be praised. Because yeah. when God, whenever he thinks about beauty, he's not, um, he doesn't look at your outward appearance and say like, mm -hmm. oh, Francisca, I think I love you because, you know, you're looking great today. <laughs> but, you know, he looks at your yeah. heart yeah. and he yeah. looks at your motives. He yeah. looks at what comes out of your heart and yeah. what is inside of you. And I think that you have to spend more time developing the inner self right. and not necessarily the outward appearance. Absolutely. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of people, like you said, do focus on the outer appearance. But like you said, none of those things will keep you in the position where you are. Maybe you're beautiful and that made you attract somebody. But other qualities are what's going to keep them with you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't really focus their attention on mm -hmm. because it's not something that others will see and right. that's what people usually care about the outside and like appearing in a certain way to other people. But what's most important is what's inside. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah. And um, I think another attribute, even somebody's um, how somebody composes themselves is also a factor that <laughs> determines <laughs> their beauty. This one is actually really, really, really huge, honestly. Like, yeah, that's yeah. true. And in what sense before I continue what I was going to say? No, because if you think about it, if you see somebody like, and we'll, hi, how are you? Like, <laughs> someone that's so loud, and then you see somebody yeah. that's like professional, they mm -hmm. sit, that's a huge difference. You would not want to refer or go to that person that's right. like, so true. you know, there's this, yeah. it makes them look ugly in a sense, yeah. because it's not like, <laughs> but it's true though. Yeah, like, like even like manners, like yeah, they're like yeah. polite, yeah. Yeah. Around, saying thank All you. Those things, we don't me. realize it, but it, yeah. it make, that's what makes us beautiful, right, actually. Right. Greeting <laughs> people, I, I, yeah, I, those I are work, I, one thing I, <laughs> I used to get annoyed with was there were people that wouldn't say good morning or like yeah. you know you're walking by someone and you just ignore them I think that's so rude and it just shows how you are on the inside you yeah. know like there's like there's yeah, nothing attitude. wrong with being nice yeah your attitude yeah. how you are towards other people and and it and it, it, it shows a lot you know how you are on the outside and I think that that's that goes hand in hand with how you carry yourself you know mm. um, so that's true. And um, I know I have a friend, and that friend, she thinks that what's beautiful to her is somebody's intelligence. Mm -hmm. And at first, I was like, somebody's intelligence. I don't know if any one of you guys can speak on yeah. that um, some more. But um, she, she, made, she mentioned that she, you know, what she considers beautiful is that somebody that she's able to talk mm -hmm. to, somebody yeah. that she's able to connect yes. with right. on a deeper level. Yeah. That yeah. is what makes somebody beautiful to her and yeah. I think that if you only focus on okay just my physical beauty but I'm gonna allow all of those other right. things like you said your manners your all of these other things to just fade away then you're not really um, amplifying your beauty right. to what mm -hmm. you could be yeah, right. exactly. and even like um, like even when you're courting someone you know is the person just coming up to you and trying to talk to you because of how you look versus trying to get to know you for who you are for what's on your inside you know like how you think you know if you're mm -hmm. only interested in me on, for how I look, then yeah. you're not interested in me entirely, you know, yeah. you don't want to know how I think, you know, how I feel, or what I believe is right or wrong, you just want me for a certain yes. reason, I think a lot yeah. of times that's what we focus so much in on, you know, and that, that physical that's action. Because you know, even when stuff. you take movies, like a lot of American movies, you see the pretty person is always the dumb one, like, yeah. so that's really <laughs> let you yeah. <laughs> If somebody attracts you, like, if that's the main thing, you see that yeah. their, their intellect, there's, <laughs> okay. there's something that, that could I be don't the know, case. it could be in mm -hmm. the case, it and I realize be. that it is for most people that strike you as very, very yeah, beautiful, like, you really have to be careful not to be following them because of their looks, because yeah. you don't know what's... Don't generalize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
criminalize it's either true. and say, oh, all beautiful people are, 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 are dumb. dumb. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, because that's, that's not true either. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, but I like, Andrea, what you said that, like, you can amplify your beauty. Like, your beauty mm. might just be something that you're born with, not really something mm. that you yourself garnered or any, anything mm. like that. But I like how you can work on traits like within you that can right. make you wow. even more beautiful. Right. Or even if you don't think that you're physically beautiful on the outside, like other things about yeah, you can make you point. more beautiful. Yeah. 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 Other things can make somebody select you. Maybe somebody's not selecting you or um, choosing you because, okay, wow, she's strikingly beautiful. But they may be choosing you because, wow, this person is really homely. This person's yeah. really kind. Mm. This person's really compassionate. Yeah. So all of those things add to whether you're beautiful or not. So I think that those other factors need to be looked at and yeah. played upon. Even if you look at somebody in the Bible, like I want to elaborate on Abigail. Do you know that story of Abigail? <laughs> Forgive me. Yeah, her husband. What was her husband's name? Um, he was very, very similar. Her, yeah, her husband, <laughs> her husband um, was very rude and very... Um, 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 well, he wasn't polite to the King David, yeah. mm -hmm. and um, it got to the point where even David wanted to kill him because of his behavior towards David and his men, and, and Abigail stepped in as the she wise and, understa and the standing yeah. wi um, wife that she was, and she intervened, and she, she spoke on her husband's behalf in a manner, and she even gave you know, food yeah. and um, all these other like, things to the king and his army you know, just so that he wouldn't kill her husband. And mm -hmm. David saw that, and he was like, you know, your husband is a fool, but you are mm -hmm. a wise woman. And he yeah. even took her from him and yeah. married him, you yeah. know, himself. So um, that, that goes to show you that, you know, yes, you know, you may be beautiful, but you also have to have um, a good heart. You have to have a heart that's, yeah. that's, that's compassionate. You have to have a mindset that's caring and, and not just say, oh, I'm beautiful, so that's it. You yeah. Know? Um, so I think that's why Abigail fits this criteria <laughs> so well. Yeah, and I like how those attributes are what elevated her. Like, mm -hmm. she was just the wow. wife of some, yeah. Like, yeah. some normal fool. guy. But then, <laughs> because of those traits that she had that maybe not everyone knew about, but the things that she herself was working on, mm -hmm. that's what made her, you know, yeah. become the wife to a king. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's really important. Well, that's all um, good points. And even if you now, like sometimes you hear people who, or I remember I heard a story and then they, um, he said that like the person that they got, she was like, oh, all I'm about is like drama and all I care about is like fighting and all of these things like that. I'm and a so, complicated woman. <laughs> and so you can be attracted to somebody, but yeah. you also don't know that, okay, these are some of the qualities <laughs> or such qualities that they have. So it's very important that you work on those other qualities and just don't focus on the outward appearance because right. the outward appearance will lead you to nothing. Right. If you just tuned into the First Love TV show, we've been talking about beauty. And we said that beauty lies in the eye of the beholder and that everyone has a portion of beauty. We also said that there are various factors which contribute to somebody's beauty. It could be how the person speaks, how the person smiles, or even their inner man. And we said that it's important that you have a good heart. The Bible says that man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And so it's important that you work on your inner self. It's important that you're beautiful inside, because if you're beautiful inside, it will show on the outside. And with that said, we're gonna come back next week as we continue this discussion on beauty. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you next week. Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you for watching the First Love TV show. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back next week Wednesday at 7 p.m. CST. If you're a French speaker, we invite you to attend our first service, which begins at 9 a.m. Our second service starts promptly at 11 a.m., which is in English. If we, have found grace, grace we are located at 7601 West Sam Houston Parkway South, Houston, Texas, 77036. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive alerts for our services and TV shows. Have a blessed and fruitful week.